Hi, I'm Greg. I'm going to tie a elk hair caddis. We're going to tie it in an owl trough style, which means that uh, the hackle through this for this fly for its floatability is going to run through the body versus having the hackle in the front side, as in a Hemingway style. What we're going to do is we're going to attach the thread on a Tamco 100 about two eye widths behind the eye. Give ourselves a little thread base down to right above the barb of the hook. And then I'm going to run my thread straight back up. Giving ourselves just a nice base, some materials won't slip on. Next piece is a, some fine gold wire. And I just put that in as a, at a 45 degree angle. Make one wrap. It's basically tied on. Now I might make two more wraps. And then just pull that even to my tie-in point. If you go too far, it'll come out. So I'll do that one more time here. There we go. And I'm going to bring my thread back, tying in my wire right to the back, and then come up about halfway. Now you can also tie these in a lot of different colors. I'm going to tie this one in a dark tan. I'm using uh, super fine dubbing. Get that started. A little bit of wax on my finger. Just enough to give myself a little purchase. And then I can spin that right on. Okay. Bring my thread back, got bare thread right to above the barb of the hook. Now I'm starting to wrap that dubbing. Tighten this up just a pinch. And then I'm going to come up the body. Nice even diameter all the way up. Right into where I tied in my thread. I'm going to come back about halfway and then forward, giving myself that nice little shape of a caddis. Put a little bit more dubbing in there and should finish this up. <clears throat> back down just a little bit. Clean up that little gap. Okay, <clears throat> now that we got the shape of the caddis with my thread, I'm going to bring my thread right up to maybe one eye width behind the eye and then straight back. And what I've done there is given myself another little thread base. I'm going to prep this feather. <clears throat> I'd like to do is cut everything off that I don't need, just this big webby stuff. And I'm going to pull these fibers so that they're perpendicular to the stem. Give myself uh, some bare stem there for my tie in point. And I've ran that bare stem right to the very front or right behind the eye of the hook, about one width behind. Make sure that's tied in. And I also have enough uh, of a bare stem so that when I make this first wrap here, I'm going to palmer this hackle backwards. 
So there I have about, oh, maybe three quarters of a wrap before I actually have hackle starting to wrap. And then I'm going to wrap or palmer this backwards with even spaces right to the back. And I'm going to grab this wire that I tied in at the very start. Pull that over the top. It's going to trap and tie in my hackle. And I'm going to run this forward and it's going to be through the hackle and I'm just going to kind of keep it at that 45 degree angle and I'm just going to run that through and if you go real fast you're not going to trap any fibers down and have to worry about that. Gives the fly that hackle a nice durability as well. That's just a different way we can tie in some hackled body. If you're going to do a uh, uh, woolly bugger, it'd be the exact same way that we'd, we would do that. Now the next piece of material is going to be some bull elk. Bull elk is great. Um, this is from Nature Spirit. And they have some of the best hair out there. Has some really nice fine tips and also the bull elk doesn't flare a lot. So I'm going to cut some of this off right off the base of the hide and then with your comb we're going to go through, pull out all this under fur. You can see that in the brush and any short pieces we have. We'll put it in a hair stacker. I'm going to stack these up so that the tips are nice and even. Pull it out of the tool. I can look. Still have, you know, maybe one or two. Not quite even. And I'm shooting for enough hair as well so that, oh, you know, maybe the gap of the hook is kind of a good starting point. What I'm going to do as well is I am going to cut these butts off. Maybe clean it one more time just to get out anything that might be in there and then restack it. tips come off. And when I pull that out of the stacker, you can see how nice those tips are. So I'm going to grab those. Elk wing is usually going to be about the length of the body, maybe just a pinch longer. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of determining the length and I have my fingernail right there for my length. That's kind of using my gauge to do that. And then I'm going to come in there fingernail to fingernail and just a little bit in front of that I'm going to make a straight cut straight across. Now another thing you want to do is maybe tighten up your thread. And then I'm also going to spin it because it's kind of been sitting there for a while and uh, kind of unwound. I'm going to lay this wing right on top. And then we're going to make a wrap. I'm going to make about three wraps before I tighten it down. And I'm pulling towards my chest. Keep that from wanting to roll on me. Take a look at my length. Good with that. 
Now we're going to get our good finisher. We'll finish that wing. And as if you notice too, that little band of thread that I've tied that in is no wider than the maybe a width of the eye of the hook. Doesn't hurt to put a little dab of cement right there and uh, give it a little bit more durability. Check your wing. It's nice on nice on top. And that is a L-Troth Elkercatus.